These are my favorite Nintendo Switch indie titles that came out in 2022. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection, Garbage Pail Kids, Atari 50. I'm not going to add on this list, although I totally loved them. In fact, both of those Ninja Turtle games were my most played games in 2022. The third one, well, I mean, I watch a ton of anime. So those aside, here are my 10 favorite Nintendo Switch indie titles that you should check out right now if you haven't done so already. If you haven't checked out Luna's Dice yet, you have to check out Luna's Dice yet. Fantastic 3D action platformer. Like Nintendo 64? Not so much. PlayStation 1? I don't think so. This to me feels like a fantastic, awesomely awesome Sega Saturn quality. That, that, that's, that's big news right there. Sega Saturn quality platformer. You maybe could have even seen this like on a Dreamcast? I don't know. But something about it, it has that vibe a little bit like Knights, in a way, if Knights was taken to the extreme and then put on a Dreamcast, I suppose, but still having uh, this style and this quality. I think it's the music that makes me remind myself a little bit more like Knights, but still have a bit of that, you know, Sonic Adventure if you toned it back a little bit. Because Sonic Adventure, as much as I love Sonic Adventure, it's a bit much, right? So Sonic Adventure, scale it back just a touch to give it that old school vibe. And that's what Luna's Dice is all about with the double jumping. Uh, you can get yourself a little bit extra platform when you swish your tail around. You just look cool, love the graphics, love the vibe, love the music. Like I said, Luna's Dice, this is a must own game. Old school, I'm telling you, you gotta check it out. Donut Dodo, you wanna go even more old school? This reminds me of like an arcade game that I could have seen back in the day like 1983 style. It's that classic single screen arcade platformer that I love so much. Donut Dodo, you got the big old Dodo guarding the giant donut. You got these little donuts too. And the idea is you have to collect all of the donuts before you can get to the big donut while avoiding uh, the different things in the way. And each stage has its own personality, its own music. The music, oh my God, fan. Freaking tantastic is the music to the, the soundtrack to this game. Big ups, big shout outs to whoever did this thing. And again, taking it all the way back, Quarter Muncher. This game is more difficult than it needs to be. And there are no continues because it's an arcade game. It's set up like a classic arcade game. So yeah, you don't continue. You just start at the beginning again. There are some added difficulties of this game later, but you have to prove you can actually beat it on an easier mode first. And you have to do that a couple of times before it unlocks those other ones too. So much awesomeness, so much cool. I love this game so much. I, you know, I first played this on the II Arcade. It's now available on the Nintendo Switch and I couldn't be more happy. I love, this is my perfect, just pick it up and just go for a round or two. As soon as I saw Once Upon a Jester in that uh, the indie world on the Switch indie world thing, I knew I had to grab it. And when I was like, oh, it's available right now, I immediately bought it. And I'm so glad I did. I love games like this. You talk about an indie game. This was filmed, I think, probably in one day in some dude's house and not even, I, it can't be scripted. You can just tell that by the dialogue, by the way they say things. Now, sometimes there's like, you know, some mistakes. They just leave it in there. You know, they just, you know, like, cause I stumbled my over, I stumbled just like that. I stumble over my own words more often than I should. But instead of just retaking and re-editing, I, mean, I did some editing in this video, except for that part I just left in there to prove a point. <laughs> it proves that it's just a fun game. And the game itself, I mean, the storyline is kind of interesting anyway. You you decide, hey, you know what? We're going to put on uh, stage plays because uh, the winner of the contest in the game uh, will be able to perform at the castle, which is where the, the gem is. And they're, they're, they're thieves. They're supposed to steal the gem. Um, and how you do that is you have to look around town, talk to people each day, each element, uh, there's five different elements to choose from between romance and spooky and fighting and stuff like that too. And you have to find out what the town likes and what the town doesn't like that specific day. So when you do your stage play, once you, you know, well, well for, before you have to do the stage play, you have to at least build a poster, right? You gotta have a flyer out there to see what's going on. Once you're actually doing the stage play, which is mostly just like timed events, you have to then, uh, you know, build on like, you know, like in this one specifically, the town was into romance. So you have to add as much romance as possible, and they don't want to see any, no, they didn't want to see any music this time around. So if there's a music option, don't choose that one. But then maybe the next day, they want music, and then they don't want 
spooky, for instance. So then you have to do everything with music. So it gives you a chance to do the same plays, the same routines, but with the different twist each time to see what's going on too. And that's been a lot of fun too. And the game itself, it's a pretty quick experience. I think I played through it all the way, uh, you know, two to three hours, maybe four hours. I don't quite remember. But I just had a lot of fun with this game, and I have replayed this game already a few times uh, just for fun, just just for the element, and um, and we just absolutely love the characters too. So hopefully this won't be the last we've heard of Jester and Sulk <laughs> in this game. Check out, uh, check this game out for sure. It's called Once Upon a Jester, and absolutely uh, just infatuated with it. McPixel 3 was, a, I mean, it's the third one apparently, maybe the other ones were on Switch, uh, Steam? I'm not exactly sure. This is the first time I've ever heard of this game and this style of game too. Um, huge pixel graphics, and that's basically the, the element and the art of it. But you have to save yourself, basically. Each element, each stage, which are super quick, think like WarioWare style, where it's just like, it's these quick little mini games. But you can do so much per mini game, so you have to try to unlock all the different things that you could have done, which make you lose, uh, but then also find a way to save yourself to make yourself win. And you can always go back through and replay the levels and stuff like that too. Quirky, zany, crazy, crazy, McPixel 3, uh, definitely worth the experience to check out. Can you believe I'm almost at 200,000 subscribers? Hit subscribe, help me get there. I'm gonna do a big old giveaway when we hit that number. Earlier this year, I talked about Super Cyborg. When you talk about games that rip off other games, I'm here to tell you that, you know, I don't need to say what this game reminds me of. You can tell what it is just by looking at it, but it's done so well, it proved to me that you do not need to have the okay, the rights, the license to make your own pseudo sequel, to make your own love letter to a game. It's like if they're, trust me, I literally reached out to HAL Laboratories and asked them, can I purchase the rights to Air Fortress for the NES so I can make a sequel, I can make a reboot, I can make an update, I can make a prequel, I don't care. I want the rights to Air Fortress. Hal literally said, oh no, we're not interested in selling the rights. So then of course my you know, smart ass response was, well then make a sequel to it so I don't have to. The good news is I don't need their permission. I can just make one, I just won't call it Air Fortress. I'll call it Sky Palace. I, I don't know, I'll come up with the name later. <laughs> but that aside, that lament here at the end of the year, uh, you wanna check out Super Cyborg because it is that Let's let's. I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna say it. I was about to say it. I'm not gonna say it. But you know what I'm saying. And um, and pretty fun. Pretty fun. It's just cool to see. And the music's great too. Carl is the game that everybody needs to play. Carl. Uh, this plays like just by looking at it, you're like, oh, how many more Metroidvania, 8-bit inspired, pixel graphics, action platformer, build your upgrade. How many more of these games do we need? My answer is all of them. However, this game done very, very, very well. Um, you might know Nintendrew. Uh, this, and this has nothing to do with the fact that he's a friend of mine. This has everything to the fact to do that this is a fantastic, fantastic game. Fantastic experience. Each level is its own mini Metroidvania. So you're not like going all the way over, then all the way over here. It's, you know, level one, one, level one, two, level one, three. There's a boss in there as well that will get you an upgrade. And just the characters are fun. I could see this, uh, I could see them having a sequel to this game. Um, I don't think he told me if there's going to be a sequel or not. I mean, I don't even know what the plans are. And maybe there doesn't need to be. Who knows? Uh, but this game, super, super amazing, super, super fun. You check out this game because it is amazing. It is called Carl, and Carl stands for Computer Automated Resource Locator, and you find other robots along the way too. Um, again, just the, 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 just the fun of this game is just the super fun of this game with the upgrades and all that too. Definitely want to check it out if you haven't done so already. Cursed to Golf, um, I love it when they take a twist on something that's the most boring thing in the world, and they make it at least kind of cool, and they did that for this, made it very, very cool. And golf, of all things. I mean, uh, the good people at Chu High Labs probably could have made a paint drawing simulator 3000 and made it appealing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, them and their team did this with uh, Curse to Golf, and, and what a fun experience, because it's golf, but it's a 2D golf game, uh, and then from there you get your upgrades, you get your power-ups, you get your other stuff to make this game playable, fun, 
and a fun experience too and like roguelite too so like every time you play this game it may not be everything may not be in the same place as it was last time so the more you keep on playing this game that you're gonna get different experiences you can use your little power-ups and cards to make it easier for you too Cursed to Golf. If you haven't checked that out yet, do so. Frog Gun was a game I also couldn't wait to play. This one, like that Lunas Dice that I was talking about at the beginning of the game, that 3D action platformer, the gimmick behind this one is your gun is a frog. Hence, Frog Gun. There you go. Uh, you can use it to attack enemies. You can also use it to grab items and shoot them. You can use it as a uh, grapple thing uh, with, with the, the, the frog's tongue. Uh, to make that happen for you. And again, I could have seen this as a PlayStation action platformer or something like that, um, which is a, which is a vibe I really, really enjoyed. And I'm glad to see it more and more nowadays too. Um, but I, I wouldn't, I, this, this was one I was looking forward to playing. There's also bosses in this game too. So if you haven't checked out Frog Gun yet, it would be of your best while <laughs> to maybe, maybe uh, give, a, give yourself a quick download on this one. I must have a thing for grappling stuff. We had Frog Gun with the tongue grapple. Now we have Grapple Dog with the dog grapple. Well, no, you play as a dog. <laughs> you have your grappling hook. Not exactly like Bionic Commando. However, again, now this one, that 2D platformer. Gotta love that. Large worlds, large levels. You can other do things too, like the little jumps you can do. You always have your grapple idea as well. Fun music in this game, fun experience. You do have to collect a few things to unlock the next area, so you might find yourself replaying the same level over and over again. But the game's fun enough that you have no problem playing the same level over and over again because it's that kind of game. It's just a lot of fun. And the game's called Grapple Dog. What's not to like about that? I love the art style in this game. I love the music in this game. You'll be singing it for the next couple of days, especially those first few stages and all that. Might want to check out uh, Grapple Dog if you haven't done so already. <laughs> of course, of course, man. Yeah, 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 Beebus too. If I'm doing a Nintendo Switch video and there's a way I can profit on it, trust me. <laughs> I, I'm going to talk about Yeah, Yeah, Beavis 2 because it was the game. I, and trust me, when I say I made this game, I didn't really make this game. When I talk about that, I'm talking about how I did some of the graphics and I put it all together and I reached out to the people for the music. Uh, you know, Mega Cat Studios did the coding, chips and chills with the music. My friend Mario did some fine tuning to it too to make the game uh, playable longer, to give a little bit more animation and stuff like that as well. But I love, you know, just when the team comes together and puts out this awesome, awesome thing. When I say I did some of the graphics, I did a few of the graphics. Not all of it, and not even some of it, just a couple of things <laughs> with this game. But you wanna check out Yeah Yeah Beebus too. It's available right now, it's almost always on sale. Uh, if you grab the game and do the Konami code at the beginning, you can play as me. Of course I'm gonna put myself in my own Nintendo game, that's right. And there's a couple other codes in there too that you can unlock and you know maybe play as others, but in the meantime, Check out Yeah Yeah Beavis 2, 100 levels, single screen, arcade platformer, defeat the enemies in the time limit, move on from there. Yeah Yeah Beavis 2, that's right. I told myself, is there gonna be a Yeah Yeah Beavis 3? I don't think so, but I told myself as a, if I was ever going to do a sequel, it would be called Yeah Yeah Beavis 2, Two. That's right. Well, it hasn't happened yet. I don't know if it's going to happen, but just let it, just throwing it out there that it may happen. <laughs> the Nintendo Switch is my travel system of choice, and when I do travel, I use the fixture grip with my face on it. Link in the description below. This is the S1. They do have it for the S2 now, which will adapt to the OLED model, and that's available to you as well. It will not help you get a higher score, but it will make you look a lot sexier. Well, I think. In fact, oftentimes when I'm traveling, I just kind of have it set up like this right on my little table thingy, but you know, however you want to put it up. 